very warm welcome to e learning session of ecoli part 3 so this is the part 3 of ecoli session that is diarrhea in ecoli so the introduction part so there are six types of diarrhea in ecoli the first one is etec that is enteropathogenic ecoli the second one is etec that is enterotoxigenic ecoli then eiec that is enteroinvasive ecoli EHEC that is entero hemorrhagic E coli, EAEC that is entero aggregative E coli, and the last one is EAEC that is diffusely adherent E coli. So let us first talk about the EPEC that is entero pathogenic E coli. EPEC frequently causes the infantile diarrhea and occasionally causes the sporadic diarrhea in adults. So patient comes with the rotary diarrhea and vomiting and also the fever manifestation the pathogenesis part so first we are going to talk about the mechanism of diarrhea first the bacteria is adher uh, adherent to intestinal mucosa with the help of plasmid coated pyrin here it will be formed a cup like projection that is called the peristalsis then ae lesion that is called the attaching and effacing lesion Effacing lesion. These are the typical lesion produced on the intestinal epithelium, which leads to disruption of the brush border epithelium, causing increased secretion and watery diarrhea. Here you may see there is an initial adherence via pilus, then there will be formation of the attachment, and this attachment will disrupt the brush border of the epithelium, and finally the increase secretion and watery diarrhea may be there the next one is etec that is enterotoxigenic e coli etc etec is the most common cause of travelers diarrhea that causing 25 to 75% of the cases then the disease it produce it causes acute watery diarrhea vomiting cramp and low grade fever in the infants as well as in the adult it is toxicogenic but not invasive then the pathogenesis part the first one is attachment to the intestinal mucosa which is mediated by the mediated by the fimbrial protein that is called cfm cfm means colonizing factor antigen then the toxin production there are there are two types of toxin which is produced by the etc the first one is heat labile toxin another one is heat stable toxin heat level toxin is going to increase the cyclic amp while heat stable toxin is into the cyclic gmp this both toxins are going to increase outflow of water and electrolyte into the gut lumen with consequent diarrhea here you can see there is a delivery of lt and st lt means heat level toxin while the st means heat stable toxin this both is going to be increase the cyclic amp and cyclic gmp and finally this both uh, cyclic amp and cyclic gmp is going to increase the outflow of water and electrolyte into the gut lumen and this will be forms the diet. the next one is eiec that is entero invasive e coli the common serotypes of the eiec are o28 o112 o114 etc then the patient comes with watery diarrhea dysentery and fever then the pathogenesis part eiec is not toxigenic but invasive while the opposite one it is in a etec etec is a toxigenic but invasive while eiec is invasive but not the toxigenic the epithelial cells invasion is mediated by the plasmid coated antigen that is called vma that is virulence marker antigen eiec is bio biochemically genetically and pathogenically closely related to the shigella here you can see there is a invasion of this eiec there is a lysis of the vacuole intracellular multiplication will be there and finally the lateral spread to the nearer cell so this 
spreading is going to cause the ulceration of the bowel and dysentery. The next one is EHEC that is enterohemorrhagic E. coli. The common serotypes are O157, H7. Patient comes with watery diarrhea and bloody diarrhea. Then the pathogenesis part. Here there is a formation of shiga like toxin or we can say the verocytotoxin. First one, there is uh, the first of all, there is a attachment of the bacteria with the intestinal mucosa. Then there is a forming of shiga like toxin. This toxin is going to inhibit the 20S subunit of the 60S ribosome. By inhibiting this ribosome, there is an inhibition of the protein synthesis, and finally, it can cause the diarrhea. The complication of this is hemorrhagic colitis as well as the hemorrhagic uremic syndrome that is called HUS. In hemorrhagic colitis, there is a gross bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain and fecal leukocytosis will be there. In HUS, there is a injury to the small vessel of the kidney and brain which leads to bloody diarrhea, thrombocytopenia, renal failure and encephalopathy. The next one is EAC that is enteroaggregative E. coli. The common serotype is O104H4. It is so named because it adheres to HEP2 cell in indexed pattern. This pattern is going this pattern is because the layering of the bacteria which is aggregated into a stack brick pattern. Here you can see the picture of this pattern. Patient comes with watery diarrhea and bloody diarrhea. Pathogenesis part. The intestinal colonization is mediated by the aggregative adhesion fimbri 1. That is by the AGGR. That is AGGR gene. It also produces the EAST1 toxin that is called Entro aggregative E stable enterotoxin 1. There is a persistent and acute diarrhea are commonly seen, especially in the developing country. The last one is DAEC, that is diffusely adherent E. coli. It is so named because it having an ability of adder to the HEP2 cell in a diffuse pattern. That's why this is called the diffusely adherent E. coli. It expresses diffuse adherence fimbri which contribute to the pathogenesis. EAEC is going to be post the diarrheal disease which is primarily into the children aged into 2 to 6 years. So this is about the 6 types of the diariogenic E. coli. So, this having a EPEC that is enteropathogenic E. coli, ETEC that is enterotoxigenic E. coli, EIEC that is enteroinvasive E. coli, EHEC that is enterohemorrhagic E. coli, EAEC that is enteroaggregative E. coli and the last one is diffusely adherent E. coli that is DAEC. I hope you can like it. Thank you.